everybody doing today? Good morning. Um, we are headed into the holidays. I've got my friend Jana here. This is going to be super fun because um, we're going to talk all kinds of stuff crammed into like 10 ish minutes. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm super excited about this. Me too. This is my friend Jana. Hi. Um, really cool story about how we're sitting here. Yes. It's a small world. It is a small world. So you brought it up. So yes. how did we talk about how we met? Okay, so Ani and I met at a CrossFit box. Yep. And, and that's a shocker. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Surprise. Um, but how we really became friends was we were teamed up for a competition in Aiken. Didn't somebody put us together? We put, like we yes. didn't we didn't pick each no. other. But a coach put us together because at the time, Ani was incredible. I mean, she's incredibly strong. I was better at gymnastics. She was a lot better at strength. So it, we just were like a good fit. It was a lot. That, that was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. And so we were put together. Um, and I do remember the name of our team was uh, the Kettle Bellas. I yes. still have the t-shirt. I do too. Yes. Yep. <laughs> and um, it was incredibly fun competition. Yep. What we walked away from, or I personally walked away from, being your partner was, and I think you agreed at the time, was that we were very equal in regards to the way we attacked Everything. the workouts, uh, work ethic, um, workload, uh, pain tolerance. Yeah, I think, and, and I, I'm, I'm assuming that you probably run into this as well. I feel like I'm that tweener person that sometimes I can't hang with the guys, yeah. but no girl wants to work right. out with me. Right. And so it's like you partner yes. up or you team yes. up and everybody teams up and you're kind of going, eh, yeah. by myself. Yeah. <laughs> Agreed, yes. Yeah. I have burned through so many training partners. <laughs> so typically I do end up training with men. Yeah. Uh, just for that reason. Yeah. But so we walked away from that with like a, a mutual respect for our work ethic. Yes. Interestingly enough, about that same time, which was about five years ago, we also set some very lofty personal goals. And so my personal goal was to train full time to make it to the CrossFit Games. Just FYI, you're gonna find out Jana's really cool. Yeah. Stay tuned, <laughs> keep watching. <laughs> Ani, on the other hand, set this very lofty goal of starting a nutritious meal prep company. And I think in Augusta, by the in way. In Augusta. Right, in the deep south. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. Um, but anyway, she, um, I think at the time, had like one grab-and-go fridge. God, I don't even that. know if we had that it just was yet. Sort what, of God, I emerging. can't remember now if I was even out of my, doing it out of my home for friends and family or if wow. I had moved. I think I had moved into the gym at the time. Yeah. So yeah, it was like. No, I don't think you were at the gym, but I think you had a fridge at the gym where okay. people could pick food up. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, I mean, it was, you know, it was a very small, but you had the concept. And so what I thought. I had a dream. She had a dream. And let me tell you something. As we sit here today, um, this was the year that not only did I qualify for the CrossFit Games, but I actually won Look, my I, age I seriously have goosebumps for you. Okay, so for those of you who uh, laugh at CrossFit or think we're crazy, we are. Yes. Um, but the CrossFit Games, the CrossFit, CrossFit Games to CrossFit is similar to the World Series to baseball. Right. It kind is of, like the thing it's that... Kind of the Olympics for CrossFit. Yes. Right? Yes. So I am number one in the world for my age division, which um, I only had a goal to qualify, but so I walked away being number one this year. Um, on that, in that same thread, I have total goosebumps. We are now sitting in this, the fruits of your labor, five years later. And who would have thought that your small home-based business would be this? Well, and it's and funny that we worked out, we, and it's almost like we kind of we haven't. See, no. I've followed you and you right, followed me. Right. I mean, it's we, that's that Facebook social right. media. We've thing. always been connected yes. through that. And then we've just kind of come together and yes. we're still on a very similar path. Yes, agree. We both have a vision mm -hmm. um, and it's just fantastic. It is. It's really fantastic. So let's talk about eating. Eating. Because, you know, here we are in the deep south coming up on the holidays and um we got some tips 
We got some yes. pointers. We got some, you're going to hear our opinions. Yes. Um, it is daunting. It is, it is daunting. It is a daunting. Nutrition itself yes. is a daunting. Typically between Halloween and Christmas, people, it's a average food fest. is basically about six to eight pounds. Yeah. And so how do, how can we avoid that? How can we avoid the pitfalls of holiday eating? And right. And I've said it before, food, food is an addiction. Food is seriously exactly. an addiction. I mean, and, and the, the worst part about it is you can't walk away from your addiction. You have to eat every day. So, you know, you might not follow all of our tips today, but maybe you'll pull some pointers. And for the next, you know, for the rest of the month, you'll actually be getting a lot of tips on how to do things just a little bit better. Make small changes. I'm not, we're not telling you to overhaul your Thanksgiving dinner. Right. So... What are some common things that you hear from people about the holidays or, you know, uh, leading up to the holidays? What I typically hear is they give themselves um, almost an excuse. They find that they, in their mind, they feel like these foods only come around this time of year. And so they are sort of entitled or they feel like they should eat them um, because, and there's, there's so many things that are happening within the next three months. We start, I feel like it really starts about two weeks before Halloween. Yep. Where you buy the small pieces of candy yep. and then there's candy wrappers. You know, everywhere. you gotta have the candy you have in your bowl <laughs> right. for decoration. Right. And then, and then all of a sudden it's full of empty wrappers is what it is. Okay, so it starts about then, and then we edge into Thanksgiving. And Thanksgiving, honestly, is my fa most it is favorite. Mine. It is mine too. Holiday. My mom comes to town. She cooks all my favorite foods, um, and I'm gonna—I mean, truth bomb. Thanksgiving is one of those meals where I show myself a lot of grace. Yeah. I'm gonna eat everything that she makes. And I told Ani earlier, I don't remember a Thanksgiving where I—I I had to step away from the table and go find some stretchy pants because I—that's how I eat. Yeah. But. Here's, here's what happens. I immediately get back on my we, meal prep and my We talked about this before. Place. You don't yes. do a whole lot of leftovers. I do not. I pack my leftovers and typically send them home with other people. So it's out of sight, out of mind. It's over. Yeah. I, I put closure to the to the Thanksgiving meal so that I'm not tempted to eat it all weekend and kind of keep going. And I we, get right back on my structure. We talked about this too. Um, and this is going to really kind of blow your mind. How many meals do you eat on Thanksgiving Day? So, yes. So, people have a tendency to... I like the way you said Yeah, they store all of their food calories up in, into this bank just for that one meal. Like, and they pretty much say, hey, I'm eating Thanksgiving, so I'm not going to eat anything else anything the rest else. of the day. Right. People, it's the worst thing you could do. Well, not necessarily the worst thing. Yes. But you will... You will Eat until you can't and then be miserable and live with regret yes. if you do this. You should have at least one or two very healthy meals leading up to. It makes you less hungry. It makes you less likely to You're to still going to, and I think people are just worried that they're not going to enjoy themselves. I mean, listen, I get it. That it is. It does come around once a year. But, oh, man be smart about it um yeah i'm with you i usually ask people hey when do you eat thanksgiving mm -hmm. one or two o'clock by one or two o'clock you should have two meals yes you should agreed. have a, a a good healthy breakfast very clean mm -hmm. and then you should have either another meal or even a really clean snack um yes. leading up to that just so you mm -hmm. get your metabolism going get that you know mm -hmm. get that going but for sure do not bank all your calories in one exactly. meal. exactly yeah. and then Give yourself that meal, but then get right back on to your yeah. fitness goals and your nutrition goals and, and and get right back into the game. Don't let it derail you for the you know the entire weekend or the next week following. And we'll talk about this. I'm gonna talk about this on a later episode, but I do wanna touch base because you you had mentioned something. So Jana right now is doing a lot of our marketing. So you may see her out and about and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. And one of the things that we've talked about is, I mean, it's it's statistics um, that we naturally, as a company, Paleo Numiums naturally slows down. We make it to about Thanksgiving, but then from Thanksgiving on is super slow where everybody, I understand everybody's traveling, but a lot of people say, oh, it's the holidays. 
This is the most important mm -hmm. time that you should eat clean Agreed. on a regular yes. basis. Yes. I mean, listen, one, two meals a day. Yeah. Clean. Because listen, everywhere you turn in the holidays is candy and sugar, Cookies. baked goods. Mm -hmm. I mean, you go to work, you come home, my kids get off the bus. I mean, it yes. is, we're inundated. Inundated. With Every stuff. single weekend is an event. Everybody's giving baked goods for treats and I mean it, it, there's parties there's all of this so I typically try and live by sort of the 80 20 rule so 80% of the time yes especially during this season where there are so many temptations I try and eat about 80% of the time clean my meal prep my healthy snacks mm -hmm. but then I show myself some grace and, and indulge in those treats and those sweets it's a, it's a mindset amount. yes it is a mindset it is a mindset and it's I mean I think start by telling yourself you're not losing anything you're yes. not you're not selling yourself short you're not you know listen life's life is too short not to enjoy the food but there are some healthy alternatives and really pick and choose for me yeah. I really pick and choose what I cheat on I mean if it's yes. a store-bought pie I'm probably not, no. it's not for me. No. Um, there are things over the holidays. I know my in-laws make these dumplings. I mean, you want to talk about the stretchy pants? <laughs> they make these dumplings that are cooked like in the giblet gravy. Yes. It is to die for. Right, right. Yes, I will totally indulge it. I will, uh, yes, I show, let's, I like the way you put it. I show myself some grace. I do, yeah. When I eat those, <laughs> but that's worth it to me. Really, really, really check and see if it's worth it. Because listen, it's not the last time that some pumpkin pie is going to be exactly. put in front of your face between yes. now and the end of the year. Exactly. There's going to be plenty of opportunities. And pick and choose. And find yes. your favorites. And yes, yeah, show yourself some grace. But like Jana said, get right back in. Get back on it. You know? our, our society in general is built around um, festivities that are built around food. So, you know, you're looking at, okay, I only have this one opportunity to eat all of this great food. That's well, a lie. That's a lie. You'll I mean, have another opportunity. It, okay, so here we go. We have Thanksgiving, we have Christmas, and then we go right into New Year's. Well, why stop there? I mean, we got Valentine's Day. We have St. Patrick's Day. We Easter, roll right into Easter. Birthdays. We have Mother's Day. We have parties. National Taco Day. There's <laughs> always going to be an event where you can overindulge. Mm -hmm. And so you have to show that discipline all year. Yeah. So you have to change your mindset. It has to be, it, it's not just a diet, it has to be a lifestyle. It does, and I'm I'm assuming that we're gonna get back together towards our first of the year and talk about my most hated word ever is resolutions. Resolutions. Yep, no. <laughs> yep. So Failure. just what Jana said, <laughs> it's a lifestyle change and you just, do one little thing at a time, and when that mm -hmm. becomes a normal, you'd make another change and another change, and before you know it, I mean, listen, five years. Yes. This is, I mean, and it's still a journey for us. Right. Um, five years, we still, I still fail. Um, you know, I like. Most success comes out of failure. Though. Yes, but and that's that exactly true. where you learn what yes. you can and cannot do. So, yes. Jana, thank you You're so welcome. much for joining us. I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of the day. Um, I promise you this is not liquor in here. <laughs> I promise. I promise. Um, but you'll be seeing way more of Jana. Um, if you have any questions, reach out to us. Stay healthy. Stay positive. Have a fantastic weekend. And we'll talk to you later. Cheers. Bye. Bye.